So let's assume we have a ball. Okay. Let's say the ball is traveling in this direction and it's traveling at let's use simple numbers 10 meters oops 10 meters per second okay it doesn't have to have units you could just what about it xenos, xenos I, found, 10, I don't even know what the xenos hypothesis is 10 meters per second okay now assume that there is we want to find the final velocity of this thing uh, if there is another force let's say the wind is blowing so this guy here whoop, was a gigantic ball kicking the ball at a goal post right here's a guy goalie right and this guy's mental calculation is trying to do it because there's wind blowing in this direction right at let's say two meters per second okay where is what's the true direction where is this ball going to go because the goalie is going to try to figure out where it's going to go and this guy's hopefully compensated for the win so he can get it in the top corner right so he can score a goal right and they can give balls different types of spins right uh, in pool billiards we call it english you get a twist and the ball goes whoosh, like this right so what you do is to be able to do this problem you draw your vectors and what you need is an angle right let's assume this is at uh, 40 degrees and let's assume this guy is at uh, 15 degrees okay so you draw your vectors you go this is 40 and this well not 40 this guy is 10 right 10 going off the horizontal at 40 degrees and over here you have the wind affecting this guy and the wind is 2 and it's going off the horizontal at 15 degrees okay let me draw these bigger so you see them a little bit usually you try to make the vectors uh, relative like if this is 10 2 is going to be smaller right you wouldn't make the 2 really big so this guy is 2 and the angle is 15 degrees right so for you the only way to be able to do this you have to break these things down to their x y axes coordinates right so what you end up doing is you draw here let's put our axes here you draw your x-axis you draw your y-axis and what you want to do i'm going to bring a different color in here now let's bring a different color let's bring green how's the green Does this erase easy yeah that should work cool so what we want to do is we want to figure out what the y component of this is and what the x component of that is right and this ends up being just straight up geometry right sokotoa right so this is your x for the ball let's call it xb and yb or bx and by that's a better way of putting it bx and by right so this is bx and by the x component of the ball and the y component of the ball i can really understand the concept of the reflection using vectors can you help me with it after you finish I can really understand the concept of re reflection using vectors. Can't I can't really understand. I was like, what? I can't really understand the concept of reflection using vectors. Can you, yeah, we can do it. We finish this. As soon as we finish this, uh, let me know. Here, I'll put a little sign here. Reflections. Reflections. And we'll do. Okay mask of Riven. i was asking if Riemann hypothesis could be proven using xenos paradox uh i should think uh i should link you a youtube from 2018 that may explain better than i can explain. if you can link it up uh on the discord page that'd be great that way i can take a look at it too later uh 
Sir Michael Atia, 89 year old mathematician, claims to have solved the 160 year old problem. Really? Wow, Riemann hypothesis. Check this out. So we want the x component of this. Well, the x component of this, if you use Sokotoa, uh, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to adjacent. Jeez, I put two, two Ds. Adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, right? So here's our 90 degree triangle. This is 40 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we wanna find this out, this guy, here, we'll do it here, and then I'm gonna erase a whole bunch, make us more room, right? Oh, Athena proof wasn't great from what I've heard from other mathematicians. Oh, wow, you know of it, Masquerima, that's cool. So this guy becomes cos of 40 degrees, is equal to adjacent which is ball in the x direction divided by the hypotenuse which is 10. so b of x if you cross multiply b of x is equal to 10 cos 40 right let's erase this so b of x is equal to 10 cos 40 degrees if you use the same thing for sine for this this becomes 10 sine of uh, 40 degrees okay never actually looked at it did it use Zeno's I gotta look at what Zeno's paradox is right so this is the direction that this guy's going the ball this is the direction for the y component of the ball and then we got to do the same thing here right if we do the same thing here we're gonna get the wind in the X direction and the wind in the y direction, right? I believe so. My information could be wrong, though. Keep in mind, I am still learning and absorbing lots of data at once. Cool, fun to do. So this guy is the same type of thing that happens over here. So this becomes two cos of fifteen, two cos of fifteen, and this becomes. 2 sine of 15. So let me put this guy here. We'll put a little arrow, whoop, put it here. And wind in the y direction is 2 sine of 15 degrees, right? But here's the kicker. Here's the kicker, right? We said that you have to give positive and negative depending on which direction things are going, right? Tyler, thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it. I love it. I love I love doing this, right? So if you're giving positive and negative in certain directions, what we're going to do, we're going to say this way is positive and that way is positive for the y, right? So this way is positive for the x and that way is positive for the y. And anything in going in this direction is going to be negative for the x and going down is going to be negative for the y. Well, this is going in this direction, so it's positive for the x. That's going in that direction, so it's positive for the y. That's going in that direction, so that's still positive in the x, but this guy's going down. The wind y is going down, right? So this is not 2 sine of 15, it's negative 2 sine of 15. Negative 2 sine of 15. Okay. So what we end up doing is this now. If you want to visualize what's happening, we're taking this vector, putting it here, right? And then we're taking this part, putting it right at the end of it, right? Because they're both going the same direction. This part of it is 10 cos 40 degrees. This part is 2 cos, 2 cos 15 degrees, right? We're going to put this guy up here, going up right that's 10 sine 40 and then this one is coming down whoop is going to be negative 2 sine 15 okay so what we end up doing now is hopefully this focuses there we go 
what we end up doing now is adding these guys up we're going to get a number we're going to add these guys up and we're going to get a number let's do that down here okay so take a look at this i'm just going to punch in the numbers i got to do it with the, on the computer so let me punch these in on the computer you guys can do it as well right so we're going to do let's do this one cos of 40 40 cos times 10 right i shouldn't even bother so this part here let's draw it here this guy is 7.66 we're going to take it to two decimal places 7.66 meters per second i should have just said meter well, you can do it per second right and then this part let's figure out what this part is cos 15 times 2 15 cos did i do yeah it was cos cos times 2 boop is 1.93 1.93 right so this whole thing is these two guys added up right which is going to be plus 7.66 7.66 which is 9.59 so let me erase this so it's not confusing so both of those added up is 9.59 9.59 okay let's combine this and the wind is giving it more power do you know who mr Egerti is no i don't i'm not sure if that's directed at me or not okay let's do this one this one is going to be 40 sine 40 times 10 so let's take 40 sine times 10 is going to be 6.43 so 6.43 6.43 minus because that's going down uh, 15 sine 15 sine times 2 minus 0 0.52 0 0.52 so this part here is going to be uh, minus six point four three which is 5.91 so the total in this direction ends up being which is really going to be here if you're going to look at it with vectors because those two guys kill each other is going to be 5.91 5.91 okay i really struggle with math because i'm dyslexic i struggle with reading because i have a little bit of dyslexia as it comes out when it comes to trying to pronounce names and reading things backwards people have noticed when i read chat sometimes they have to correct me from what i read right it's just a little bit of a struggle a little bit more effort from my part uh, that i have to put in and i've taught i've taught people with who have this this sex layer, some severe some not um granddad speak up please <laughs> i'm assuming you're not um, what do you call it uh, you might be here just to play but just in case just in case you're legit you got math problems because you got dyslexia uh, um, put the effort in I've worked with students that ha have had that problem and they excel they can excel right so all you got to do now is just do the Pythagorean theorem right actually that goes to here I guess It goes there it's asmr and headphones are your friend sokotoa like yeah it's supposed to be chill it's supposed to be chill so if we do this try to figure out the magnitude of this thing we're just going to do pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared so it's going to be 9.59 squared plus 5.91 squared is equal to c squared so let's just do that okay 9.59 squared 9.59 I failed math because of squared why did you fail now plus 5.11 squared equals that 
126.90. So this becomes 126.90 is equal to c squared. So c is equal to the square root of that, right? Because of what did you say? Because of circles. I got an 8 head up the Hmm. You got an 8? Let's check it out. Square root that. Mm, I think it should be more than 8. You got 11.26. This the, That's the magnitude here, right? So the ball's traveling faster than this guy kicked it thanks to the wind power, right? Now, you could figure out what the angle is as well, right? Because the angle is going to be going down now. It's going to be less than 40 degrees. And the way you figure that out is you're going to use Sokotoa again. Okay. So the way you do that is, let's just use 10, I guess. 10 theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 6.43 divided by 9.59. So theta is equal to 10 inverse of that doohickey, whatever that is. Let's do it. Could you help me with topics 12.11 of the A level spectrum modeling with differentials, please? I'm really struggling with them. Oh, Harvey. I, I I couldn't help you on that. I haven't done that stuff for a long time. Modeling with differential equations or integration and stuff like this. At some point, I will get back into it, and we will definitely hold live streams uh, for it. But right now, specifically, just focusing on. I know, brother. I know. For you know how many people have had that have asked me to teach them calculus. Uh, and I will at some point, but I can't do it right now. It's too much on my plate to, for me to go learn, relearn calculus. 33.84 degrees. 33.84 degrees. So this angle now is 33.84 degrees. So the guy kicked it this way. The wind is pushing it this way. So the ball is actually going to go, boop, according to my diagram. This angle, the true motion of the angle, is 33.84 33.84 degrees and it's going to be traveling at 11.26 meters per second okay can we go back and watch your old streams yeah i had uh i'm just gonna leave this up so you take a look i'm just gonna catch up with the chat uh, dang yeah am i on the good or naughty list i have no idea i don't have a good and naughty list you're either in my class or you're out right i had that issue in school too Did it? 